Mm, you'll get tired of holding it. sitting here on the shores of the Hudson Bay and it's a pretty interesting different place to be but we'll start with a little bit of trivia Hudson Bay so what's who's Hudson Bay named after Hudson Hudson, Hudson. <laughs> yeah. yes Mr. Bay yeah. <laughs> yeah so Hudson Bay is named after Henry Hudson and um uh, people from the eastern seaboard or New York, that area, it's the same, same guy that Hudson River is named after. So it was his fourth voyage into uh, North America, and what was he looking for when he was here? Northwest Passage. Northwest Passage, yeah. So he came over the top into Hudson Bay and he actually thought he found it. So he came around to the corner, was sailing south, thought he was home free and sailing to China and he wanted to trade for the silk and the spices and all that. And then ended up getting the land started to turn north again, and he ended up getting stuck in Hudson Bay over winter. Got stuck in in ice, and in the springtime he was going a bit crazy, and he still want he the, the ship got free from the ice, but he still wanted to explore. Started zigzagging around, and and um, his crew mutinied, and they sent him and his son and a few other crew members that were loyal to him. They sent him in a little boat and set him adrift. And, he was never seen again. There's a little bit of depressing parts to this. So. <laughs> you might have to drink a bit more. <laughs> you guys are being used. You're used to being depressed now for the last couple days, right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, no so, sleeping bears tonight, though, please. 
sorry. No sleeping no bears. Sleeping bears. Okay. <laughs> Well, Nick's but, the first song. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Hudson Bay, named after Henry Hudson, sailed in here in 1610. And had quite a few, or five or six different ships came in looking for the Northwest Passage and didn't find it. The, the first one to spend, or find Churchill was a Danish crew ship, and they came in, they had to overwinter in the river, the Churchill River, and only three, three guys survived that. Wow. So they sailed, and they oh. sailed that big ship back to Denmark with three people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, Seriously? Yeah. Wow. And so they, uh, most, most of the crew and most of these, these, these ships in the age of sail, they died of what disease? Scurvy. yeah. So when they're actually filling ships in, in England and France and Spain for these voyages, they, uh, they, they estimated that 50% of the crew would die from scurvy, so they knew that ahead of time. And these sailors wow. still signed up. Yeah. And um, I'm going off track here. So. <laughs> um, the next, so the next set of Europeans, after they kind of gave up on the Northwest Passage, that sailed into here. What were they looking for? Gold. No. Oh. Fur. Yeah. What kind of fur in particular? Beaver. Beaver. Yeah. And why beaver? Yeah. Beaver coats, beaver hats. Hats, yeah. So, yeah. So, beavers have been hunted to extinction in Europe, and so those beaver beaver pelts could be shaped into nice those big top hats that we always see in the old movies, and they would retain their shape when it rained and and just uh, fashionable in Europe, right? And so they had um they had fur trapping going on already around Montreal and. And Toronto and in the 13 colonies this back in the 1600s, 1660s, and there's two French guys and they were starting to track a little bit further away from Montreal, going north, and the native people said, well, you guys should go even further north to the, the Hudson Bay, that's where you'll find the big beavers, and, and native people that are, that are friendly and willing to trade. And so they went to um, the governor of Montreal and asked if they would finance their expedition to go up into the Hudson Bay. And the governor, he kind of said, in his French accent, he said, no, 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 we want to have wine and grow grapes and milk cows for cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so he said, no, they want, they want to focus on agriculture. So these two guys, they went down to Boston, they found five English businessmen, proposed the idea and, and had caught with them. And so they had, in 1669, two ships sailed from England for Hudson Bay. They came in and they found that the beavers here were were bigger and that the native people were uh, were friendly and willing to trade. And so they sailed back to England in 1670 and uh, traded their beavers and on the market there and made a little bit of money. And that was the start of the oldest company in North America. That's Hudson Bay Company, yeah. Wow. So. I thought it was Walmart. <laughs> yeah. So, so 1670, the Hudson Bay Company formed, and the King of England he he granted charter to this company. He said, "Okay, all the all the land where the water drains to the Hudson Bay that now belongs to English. So it's exclusively for the English to to trap and 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 trade with the natives there." And so he said that, and the English hadn't even stepped foot in in inland from the shore here. And so just like that, they got 40% of Canada. So, so they would they would sail in here and they would trade they would trade certain things with the native people for the beaver pelts, like rum and, and sugar, um, guns and, and gunpowder. But another thing is these blankets you guys are all sleeping with. There's a reason this is here. <laughs> so this is called the Hudson Bay Point Blanket, and you can see on it there's these little stitches here. So these are what are called the points. So these. These resembled the, so this is a wool, 100% wool blanket that's from the sheep in England, and maybe not anymore, but it was back then. And so these would represent the quality of the blanket. But for a long time too, every point actually actually was a, a unit of currency for a made beaver pelt. So the native people would have, this blanket would trade three and a half made beavers. So beaver pelts were actually the currency for a while here. And um, yeah, so the, so, the, so the company got to start in 1670 and they're still going now. I just read the other day that they built a new state-of-the-art um, 
warehouse where they could get everything really quick for online. So they've had to adjust over almost 350 years now that they've been going. Yeah. And, um, and at one point too in, in, in their history, they actually got charter for all the land that, where the water flows to the Arctic Ocean, as well as lots of it going to the Pacific Ocean. So even some places in the USA, like Spokane and, and uh, around Oregon, they got their start as, as fur trading posts for the Hudson Bay Company. So the Hudson Bay Company at one time, they governed one twelfth of the Earth's land surface, so it's bigger than the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. So it's a big, big company and it's still around. And um, yeah, so this is a song about the Hudson Bay Company. Uh, and I wrote this a few months ago, and you guys are the first other than my dog and my wife are the first ones to hear it. <laughs> so let's see if I, I can do it. for a while, including free traders from USA that came up and tried to take their beavers. So, yeah, so Canada got its start on beavers. Yeah. <laughs> so, from beavers to another animal, though, um, another trivia question. What's the biggest, the biggest land animal in North America? Walrus. Yeah, you think so, but there's an animal that's even bigger, even yes. heavier. Walrus? Grizzly bear. Even bigger than grizzly bears. Moose? Even bigger than moose. 
whales? Are you talking about whales? No, no whales. Whales, 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 whales don't count. These animals live on plants. Elephant seals. Bison. Bison, yeah. Bison, yeah. Maybe someone said that already. So. Extra glass of wine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or two. I knew I liked so, so bison or buffalo, you can see. Anyone know what plague this is? It's pretty small, so it kind of. It's his provinces. <laughs> So this is the provincial flag of Manitoba, and you can see on there it's a buffalo oh. or bison. Yeah. So buffalo and bison are the same same animal in North America. So which leads me to a joke too. <laughs> Steve, Steve might like this. So what did the father buffalo say when his son was leaving home for college? Bye, son. <laughs> <laughs> Have they seen your show before? <laughs> 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 Another glass of wine. <laughs> so there's a reason the bison or buffalo, I'm going to call them buffalo just because it works with my song better on, <laughs> on, the, on the flag. And my, my parents at, at home raised buffalo, so it was about 20 years ago they started raising buffalo, and so I started to learn a bit more about these animals and just how uh, important they are in the history of, of all of North America, really, but um, especially, especially Manitoba. So at one point, there was, there was an estimated 60 million or even 90 million buffalo in North America. So, yeah. so a huge, the biggest herd of mammals that were ever seen and ever will be seen, and there's a colonel once in, in Arkansas when they are kind of moving westwards, and he, uh, he saw a herd, he estimated it was 3 million buffalo moving in front of him. Yeah. So you can imagine how important these animals were for the First Nations people that lived in, in USA and Canada. And they pretty much ranged through the buffalo from the boreal forest down to northern Mexico and Rockies to the Appalachians and even further. And um, so, so the reason they're on the, on the Manitoba flag is that the first settlement in, in uh, Manitoba is, was Fort Gary or the, the uh, Red River Settlement where today Winnipeg is. And so these people came and they had it really tough, so they had really cold winters and they tried to grow some crop and crops failed. And at the same time all the fur trappers and the, the Métis, they weren't really friendly with this, this idea of settlement either too. So what pretty much saved them is the buffaloes. There were still buffalo ranging at that time. <coughs> and they could um, they could kind of mix buffalo meat together with fat and some, some berries and pack it in a pouch, and that was called pemmican. And with that pouch kind of hung around them, they could, they could travel, they could work, and it's the same for the, the native people and for um, the fur trappers too, they all pretty much subsisted on buffalo. So this is one thing that we don't really get taught in school in the USA or in Canada, but that, so as, as the Europeans moved westward and we wanted to settle the land here, we had a big problem is that we had the First Nations, the native people were on the land. And so as long as natives were on the land, you couldn't really settle it. And so one way to, to take care of them was to take care of their food source. So that was why the big hunt for, for buffalo. And so that number went from about 60 million or whatever it was to less than a few hundred animals in the course of about 20 years just because we had, they had to get rid of them. And, um, Anyway, so this is the sad part. This is the sad song. Yeah. Drink the water here. <laughs> so there's different different ways too that the natives they they hunted these animals before they had horses. And one way is the buffalo jump. People heard about that. Where they would just run buffalo over the jumps and and. Um, or they'd run them into pounds, which were kind of holes that were big holes that were dug out in the ground, so it was a little bit lower. They'd jump in, couldn't jump out anymore. <coughs> and so for the native people, that's what they lived off as buffalo. They were their, their life source. And, and when they were gone, they were pretty much forced to sign the treaties with the new governments of Canada and USA and onto their reservations. But buffalo made a comeback now in the last few years, including on farms and in lots of our national parks. And so it's not so sad anymore. 
this is the Buffalo song. So I wrote this a few years ago.
couple of songs. A bit of a sad story, but it's better. So gotten better. Um, this one more song I'd like to play tonight. Um, this isn't an original. So this is one of my favorite artists, Neil Young. Everyone, a lot of people know Neil Young. Yeah. So he grew up. He's a local. Grew up in Winnipeg and lives in Los Angeles now, I think. But sings a lot of songs about about Canada and the prairies. And this um, this year, with my wife and our new nine-month-old son and our dog, we actually drove from our home in the Rocky Mountains to Thompson, just south of of uh, Churchill, and took the train up, so we got to drive through the prairies. So it's a song kind of about the prairies, and after all, your adventuring going home to where it started. So called Far, Far From Home. Yeah. 